Hey yo, welcome back to MBK React. Bring you a second installment to our What If series reaction produced by Edge Nut. Shout out to him. What if for greed? What okay. do you know about greed? Uh, you like you just you just huh? You're just greedy, man. You're just greedy. You're you just greedy. Trying to eat. You just trying to eat. Can't be selfish. Like you just trying to take. Like, I, I want this. Like, hey, this. what the? Hey, if you ever did that to me in your life, like, reach around, like, somewhere around this part that's of my body. That's how I saw it on stomach. Uh, I was damn near almost with that lady, man. Whoa, hey, that's, let's cut it off right there. Hey, so this is our What If reaction <laughs> for ReZero. If you guys haven't noticed already, we finished season one and two. Playlist going to be right there. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Playlist going to be somewhere <laughs> on our channel. So, yeah, uh, this is going to be our What If Reaction. We already watched Pride and we're about to do Greet now. So, you know, to do the like that button, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell on for our Read Our Playlist so you get notified when we upload a new What If series next. <laughs> By the doing. way, these videos are hella good edited and they're good so far. So, let's keep watching them. Let's keep it going. Hey, don't worry, try and start it. Uh, so starting in 3, 2, 1, go. The new Schlampoosh. A dream. Huh? That's not him. Wait, I what? saw a dream. Wait. A dream that wouldn't end. <laughs> over and over. I haven't watched it in years. I don't know. Repeated and corrected every mistake. But before I knew it, I lost oh. count. Oh. Oh. I died. Over 100 million. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not my help. What? I just wanted to reach a wish. No matter what, I had to save everyone. And that's why I took her hand. Oh, ah! well, so this is if you took the deal? Yeah, I remember this now because I remember you died one Best girl in the shop. Behind Betty. <laughs> Actually, what the fuck, Elsa? Oh, I gotta stop cussing. I'm <laughs> <He's super laughs> the same as any other day, except a voice was in his head. Hmm. After forming the contract with Echidna, she's been able to communicate with him through sound waves, and she can watch everything oh. he does through the black crystal pendant hanging from his neck. With the oh. he was able to save the sanctuary, pass the trials, and protect everyone he cares about. But that didn't come without a cost. After dying over 100 million times, Natsuki Subaru was now a completely different person. He's desensitized to a lot of things and no longer fears death. He's become a new version of Subaru that abuses his ability as often as he prefers to. <laughs> All the while, the Witch of Green watches him in amusement. This is Kasaneru. Jesus. The greed is Ugh. Nah, this is all that clean ass. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, Music in the back. <laughs> I am much. Like, this is what as soon as he like. finishes practicing his smile in the mirror, <laughs> Subaru touches the black crystal pendant he wore around his neck. As he held it in his hand, its presence grew stronger and started to pulse as if it was a living thing. The pulse grew faster until it was equal to Subaru's own heartbeat. And that was precisely the moment his consciousness left him. Oh. Without a word, Subaru sits down across from Echidna and gulps down his cup of tea with no reaction whatsoever. It wasn't that he had forgotten what the tea was made of, it had just been so long since he cared. You could at least say hello. There's no reason to. You're already prying inside my head. God, I hate dub. So. <laughs> this and that are different matters, you know. Reading me properly is simply the polite thing to do. After all, I am a shy young maiden, as delicate as a flower. <laughs> Hey, the meaning of those words change without me noticing. Echidna was quite tolerant towards Subaru's and politeness, so his sarcasm didn't bother her. She relaxes her mouth into a smile, which causes Subaru to accidentally admire There's something her about her there. Like, I feel like she's not even... I feel like that is Sotella. She was a perverse, demonic figure that exuded a sensation of inescapable ruin and destruction. But Subaru still found it difficult to be afraid of her. The two of them talked for a bit, but it wasn't typical for them to delve into idle gossip, so Subaru planned on returning to reality as soon as possible. 
Before leaving, he tells her that from now on, he's removing the pendant whenever he uses the bathroom. Uh -oh. And then, despite her pleas huh? for him to stay, Subaru exits the tea party without saying goodbye to Wait, when he uses the bathroom? There's nothing to decide. Uh, what was going when on? When his consciousness returns, he on? confirms that only a few seconds have passed, but he still wasn't used to the <clears throat> discomfort produced by the gap between worlds. Maybe I'll never get used to it. Subaru spoke out loud, talking to himself, but Echidna was always listening and would often interject with her own suggestions, which began to annoy Subaru to the point that he asked her not to speak with him if it wasn't necessary. Yes, yes, I understand. I'll be silent except for when it's absolutely necessary. <laughs> you just made a witch obey you. You truly are a master of this. Shut the hell up! <laughs> there was a sudden knock on Subaru's door, but having repeated this loop already, he knew exactly who it was. Right on schedule, Petra says good morning and explains that she's got just plans to go shopping this afternoon. <laughs> However, she doesn't know if the weather will be nice enough. They chat for a bit longer, and then Subaru visits the courtyard where Garfield was sparring with Reinhardt. Garfield Wait, fought what? at full strength, but was easy. Wait, Garfield's not supposed to be out of there. <laughs> he's got a Garfield left angrily to go watch nah, the Oh, yeah, he did yeah. the trials and all that. Reinhardt, on the other hand, didn't even work up a sweat, and somehow the grass underneath him had returned to its original clean state. Excuse me? The thought of Reinhardt as an like enemy that? gave Subaru the chills. And that's exactly why Subaru secretly led him to join the Amelia camp about a year ago. By convincing Felt to drop out of the royal selection and abandon the Estrella family, Subaru caused Reinhardt to feel depressed and out of place. With nowhere else to turn, he accepted Subaru's offer to support Amelia, but after being abandoned by Felt, Reinhardt was never the same. Hey, I'm glad because of his childhood trauma, Wait, Garfield was miserable uh, as well, uh, but instead of working through his trauma and solving the problems within his heart, Roswell and Subaru excluded him entirely and forced him to leave the sanctuary against his will. If huh? they hadn't, he would have been eaten by rabbits, but the result of saving him was an unstable Garfield whose depression was steadily being converted into rage. Reinhardt became an outlet for him to release his anger, but even that only reminded Garfield of the strength he lacked. Yeah. Talking with Garfield and Reinhardt wasn't intentional, though. Subaru just happened to run into them on his way to the library. The mansion's library was actually where Subaru's daily routine was supposed to begin. Hey, Beatrice. Sorry to intrude. Beatrice said nothing and sat in a corner with her forehead pressed to her knees. In the past, she might have greeted Subaru with some form of insult, but now she wouldn't say anything at all. Beko, come on, don't you want to play outside? Subaru kept pestering her until she finally had enough. Actually, his does that. Her to voice do. was hoarse, and she almost sounded like a different person. But hearing her voice at all was a big relief to Subaru, because typically she wouldn't even speak a single word to him, so today he felt pretty lucky. During the events of the sanctuary, Subaru forced her to leave the forbidden library that she swore to protect. Up until this point, Beatrice had dedicated her entire life to her contract. But now, that contract was broken, and so was Beatrice. <laughs> in a deep depression, Beatrice spent the rest of her days incessantly sobbing with a non-existent will to live. Subaru Jesus. wrapped his arms around her to comfort her shivering body without knowing that he was really the one searching for comfort. But Beatrice hated it, so she clawed at his neck until it bled. Subaru eventually gave up and shut the door behind him on his way out, leaving Beatrice alone once more. Back then, I wonder if I should have lied to her. I could have said I was that person. Saving her life was the right thing to do, though it is a shame that her contract was broken in the process. Wait, hold on a second. Isn't it your fault that she ended up this way? Well, There's of course, problems. I will take partial responsibility for the child's solitude. But my intent was certainly not to force misfortune upon her. I do hope you understand. Even if devastated by regret momentarily, there will come a day where that child is free again. In due time, someone will accept her. Perhaps that someone is you. There are an infinite number of possibilities, after all. Sure. Finished with his conversation with Echidna, Subaru ran I'd like to see Roswell. A, I'd like to see a, a scene Roswell like that where she's just in his head the whole time. And there was a certain element of respect in the way he addressed Subaru. 
Roswell had come to appreciate Subaru's utility and respected him for all he's accomplished. Subaru wasn't too happy to be working with him though, especially considering all the trouble he caused at the sanctuary. However, Roswell was too great an asset to be cast aside. So reluctantly, Subaru cooperated with Roswell, and the two of them worked. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> because yeah, I was saying, I don't remember seeing that. That's probably in the old book or something. Rom did as well. She no longer insulted him or called him Barosu. She spoke with courtesy in a dignified manner as any mate would. However, there were no traces of familiarity or friendliness in her voice. She was distant and treated him as if he were an esteemed guest whom she yeah, was with depressed. <laughs> in the room with Rom and Subaru, Rem slept silently in her bed as she has been for the past two years. <sighs> At Subaru's request, Rom left the room, giving Subaru some alone time with Rem. Well, Rem and someone else. Hey, look, Echidna. Should you For you it? to call me <laughs> is truly a rarity. <laughs> Could you remind me how to wake her up? Echidna explains that there are three possible ways to save Rem. The first is to find and question oh, the sin artificial right gluttony and I'll try to make it. them reverse the effects of their authority. However, finding them would prove to be enough of a challenge, and defeating them would be even more difficult if really, you don't even know if the authority <laughs> can be. Yes, yes, the so second clear. option is about as equally unlikely as the first because it would require cooperation from the sage, which, according to Echidna, isn't a realistic expectation. Mm -hmm. The either. sage. So we're really only oh. left with the third option, which is to obtain the blood of the divine dragon. Oh. The unknown <laughs> power in the dragon's blood would certainly be enough to wake. Uh, I need to read the manga. <laughs> I need to start reading the manga today. <laughs> and that's why you absolutely must make Amelia the ruler. Amelia! Subaru knocks on you Amelia's door and Amelia knocks back about. from the other side. She lets him in and they have a nice little flirtatious interaction, but Amelia changes when she notices the scratches on Subaru's neck. You're cheating on me. Immediately, she realizes that Beatrice was the one responsible, and then a large quantity of mana surges out of her body. The air starts to freeze, and Amelia loses control. Uh, Soon, the mansion and everything around it will turn into ice. Amelia, calm down! Everything's all right! Hey, Amelia, look at me! Subaru hugged Amelia's body and desperately called out to her. Eventually, she snapped back to reality after seeing Subaru smile at her. Yeah, back to Earlier that morning, Subaru had practiced his fake smile in the mirror because he knew Amelia would need it. If she had fake continued smile. to freeze the mansion, Reinhardt would have had no choice but to stop her, and Subaru probably would have had to use Return by Death again. Yeah. So luckily, the fake smile worked, Amelia calmed down, and the mansion was safe again. Amelia was so different from before because what she saw in the trial brought back painful repressed memories that continued to haunt her relentlessly. And because Subaru took the trials for her, she was never able to overcome her traumatic oh, past yeah. resulting in an unstable, incomplete oh. version of Amelia that was now entirely dependent on Subaru. I bet it would be more convenient for you if she were an emotionless doll that followed your every command. Subaru tried oh, his best to ignore him, but sometimes it was difficult to do so. Echidna disliked this Amelia and would often make rude comments when she saw her. This really bothered Subaru, but not as much as the guilt did. He couldn't help but wonder if perhaps Amelia would have been better off without him. Whether no, or not he made the right decision was a question that constantly plagued Subaru throughout his daily life. He's literally the only one that like... reassurance, but it was never enough. He's really the only one that like has some sort of like uh, to, like know what, what's going on. And that's only because he pretty much screwed everybody around here. I wish I could continue to friend. After having a bit of a panic attack, Subaru hurried back to his room. He didn't want anyone to see him like this, but when he opened the door, he found a dark-haired woman sitting on his uh -oh. bed, smiling. Elsa was no longer an enemy. She wasn't exactly an ally, but in any case, she didn't pose a threat to Subaru anymore. In fact, Subaru was now her employer. She's been working behind the scenes doing oh. the dirty work for the Why is it always a million every they what if yeah, she's Sin working with Subaru? Greed ...and capture the Sin Archbishop of Wrath. However, Elsa's current assignment to wow. track down the Archbishop of Gluttony was unsuccessful. Wait, she captured Wrath? Oh, Elsa. 
We're on the side room, right? How is the weather out there? Elsa replied that the weather was fine, and Subaru nodded in confirmation, and then asked her for another small favor. I see. Thank you. Now, please take your knife and lop off my head. <laughs> what? Oh, and try to make it painless. <laughs> Elsa was a bit confused at first, but after confirming that Subaru was serious, she followed his order. Subaru's blood sprayed across the room and his consciousness faded away. <laughs> With his final thoughts, he felt sympathy for whichever maid would have to clean up the mess. Elsa would sometimes question his sanity whenever he asked her to kill him, but would still obey him anyway, making her an excellent means of using return by death. When Subaru woke up, Echidna confirmed that he had reset to earlier that same morning. She also asks him why he used Return by Death, but he doesn't give her an answer. Once again, Petra knocks on the door and says good morning. Oh, it assumes because she could. And just she like the previous loop, explains that she has plans to go shopping this afternoon, but doesn't know if the weather will be nice enough. However, this time, Subaru has a proper response for her. Rest assured, Petra, the weather's going to be nice today, so you don't need to worry. And that was the response he had died for. Subaru <laughs> sacrificed his life to give Petra that information. What? A small, insignificant detail such as the weather was worth more to Subaru than his own life. Yeah, this guy's nuts. <laughs> Meanwhile, atop the hill in that meadow of green, the lonely witch let out a sigh. Using your own life to protect others is noble indeed. However, your ability, returned by death, is a double-edged sword. If the lives of others become too desperately consequential, you can no longer value your own. With all the afflictions and hardships that Subaru went through, he was unconsciously led to rely on the witch. And with Subaru's returned by death ability at her disposal, Echidna held the world in her palm. You truly are. Someone who can satisfy me. She swore to wholeheartedly assist the boy with his own goals however she possibly could. But at the same time, also intended to satisfy the inexhaustible curiosity of a witch. So from now forth, so much else is she there to learn? Like, what is there to learn? <laughs> equally descend upon the boy for all eternity. His suffering would become her satisfaction. And that was the witch's love. Ah, <sighs> even so. A proposition that would remain sempiternally unsolved, and yet an enigma that would forever enthrall her. Why must love always fade? Oh, no! No! So basically she stopped loving it and it became a fucking... Uh, he became a walking rem. <laughs> <laughs> He literally killed himself just because he wanted to tell Petra it was actually a really good day. That's hell of a came back and said, I was thinking, I was thinking he killed himself because she failed or something. He's like, alright, try it again. And he killed himself just to tell her it's gonna be a good day. He's like, oh, hey. oh my lord. Wait, what's he? The scene where the other Subaru. No, that's right. the intro. Hey, so how's the uh, what a story for Gree? What y'all what y'all think? What y'all think? That one was a really good story was too. Yeah, that, one was really, that one was really good. Oh. I feel like I wish they went more into it. Like, uh, yeah, that, that, I mean, yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah, you yeah. can't because like they already explained like how he died a hundred million times. He's already insane, and like his like they pretty much already told you the effect of everything of his what his greed done. Amelia's relying on him and she can't really do anything unless it's you know she's broken yeah she's basically broken, everyone's broken. depressed besides Rosewall yeah so it's pretty and much, Ram I mean Ram Ram yeah so it's pretty much just like yeah it's pretty much everyone like won I mean everyone lost besides Rosewall and then pretty much just Rosewall like how it, like how he kind of intended to yeah. except this time he's not like you know, on their side, he just he just didn't lose. Oh yeah, and uh, Reinhardt. Reinhardt. Oh, Reinhardt. Reinhardt he's depressed, depressed like crazy. Reinhardt, well, like Garfield is over. 
Like all these niggas is stuck. Like, all <laughs> the characters really only got cut in half. Yep. Like he's just stuck. Like Reinhard, he's like a shell of himself. He still has a powerful, but like he has no no moral to stand for anymore. Mm-hmm. Like it's crazy. Like we don't even know what happened to um Garfield's sister. Oh yeah. Uh, that shit, but that really probably don't even matter. It's too crazy. <laughs> And, this, and the dragon, though, and the sage. The sage and the dragon. I'm pretty sure we heard... Not, we heard the dragon. No, I think we I heard, heard, the sage heard something about the sage I think before. we have, but it's been like, it was so minor. I don't yeah, it was something small. The sage. It might, it might have been dragon. dealing with... Uh... Bunker. Okay. Then <laughs> <laughs> you said that, I don't want to talk no more. But yeah, I'm pretty sure we heard... We don't like know about the sage. I'm pretty sure we heard someone be called a sage before. Yes, sir. Hey, what that is? I can't wait for... Season three, season, yeah, for like just yeah, like, you're gonna you're gonna wait for sure. <laughs> no, no if and or what about it. Or booties. You're gonna wait. Or booties for sure. And don't look at me like that and smirk like I don't know what possessed me to do that. Hey. <laughs> so anything else to say? Anything else to say, guys? I like how this ending wasn't didn't end kind of like in uh like the last ending didn't end like in like a good way, but it ended in like a way. Like peacefully and like in a way like this super. is peacefully for Subaru. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. He wanted to tell her how the weather was. That's peaceful. He, <laughs> did, he doesn't care about his life no more, so it's peaceful. That's not stressful. Hell. That that might be hell to you, but to Subaru, this is way of living. <laughs> I mean, he was in hell in the last story, then he finally got some release. But he is like, he can't, he can't like kill himself and be done with it. He pretty much, he's pretty much there through it all, no matter what. I could have sworn in the last what if story. I'm pretty sure Elsa said you would have been the man I loved or something like that. Maybe I read something wrong. Or That's something. probably another uh, what if story. Nah. I mean, it seems like nah. she. Nah. It seems like she's a big part of a lot of these stories too. So I might have some. Cause she's so it. fucking strong. Yeah, I mean, like she's. It makes no tell. sense why Reinhardt is that strong. <laughs> like, what is this? What is the explanation behind this nigga's strength? This nigga just a random knight. And he's like, yeah, I'm just OP as fuck. He's uh, he just, he's just that guy. <laughs> like, even Julius ain't that strong. He got shit turned up on my music. You're not that guy. Hey, I got betrayed, so he probably got poisoned or something. Yeah, he's on the ground like, Phoenix! Phoenix! Fuck! I'm on. Hey, so that was a great if story. So you know what to do. First of all, make sure you check out Ed Nut for Ice Nut. I think I said it right for all the other word of stories and all that. And uh, you know what to do with like, type comment, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share, and turn post notifications on. And ring that up. Yeah. Bell. MBK out.